Angle of elevation and depression. So let's start with a picture. So there's space in your handout to write this. So I've got the bottom of some canyon down here. And I'm going to draw some person in the bottom of the canyon. Okay. So over here on a cliff, I've got another person. And I can say, from this person's viewpoint up here in the cliff, this is their line of sight. Line of sight. It's always a horizontal line. And then I can say this person is looking down towards this other person. And this angle here We'll call it theta. That is considered the angle of depression. So angles of depression are measured down from this line of sight, which is a horizontal line. So a horizontal line, the angle downward is considered the angle of depression. All right, so angle of elevation. All right, so over here I have another cliff. This cliff is shorter. And there's a person up on this cliff also. But now I'm going to focus on this person down here at the bottom, um, in the bottom of the canyon. This person has a line of sight also. It's a horizontal line, line of sight. But this person is looking upwards, upwards to see this person. So we'll call this, uh, we'll just call this alpha, for example. This is considered the angle of elevation because it's measured from this horizontal line of sight upwards. All right, so there are definitions of angle of elevation and angle of depression. Let's do the example. So we have an escalator in Harrods Department Store in London. has a rise of 195.8 feet, um, and the angle of elevation the escalator makes with the ground floor is 10.36 degrees. Calculate the length of the escalator. Step one, and always step one, is to draw yourself a picture. And in this case, it's going to be a right triangle. All right, so here's my escalator. So this, this piece right here, the hypotenuse, is the escalator part. And it looks like that's the part I eventually want to calculate the length of. So it says it has a rise. Well, the, the rise is this piece over here. Remember slope, rise over run. So this is the rise. So the length of this piece is, what they say it was, 195.8, and the units are in feet. It also says that the angle of elevation, ah, angle of elevation is measured from a horizontal upward, so that's this angle right here. This angle of elevation is 10.36 degrees. Okay, so I want to calculate C and I know this angle. So I'm going to use cosine, or am I going to use sine, or am I going to use tangent? Well, I know the side opposite to the angle, so that means I'm going to use sine, because the sine of the angle, use theta, is considered the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I have the sine of 10 point three six degrees is equal to the side opposite, well that's 195.8 feet all over C. And let's transfer our work up here. All right, so I am going to multiply both sides by C. So I have C times the sine of 10.36 degrees equals 195.8 and divide both sides by uh, the sine of 10.36. Again, make 
sure you're in degrees. So C is going to equal 195.8 divided by the sine of 10.36 degrees. And when you do that, when you calculate that out, you get 1,088.8 feet. All right. Uh, let's go and do the other example. The angle of depression example. All right. So we have a plane making a descent. I'm going to kind of draw it as I as I read it. You can read it for yourself. So here's a plane flying along. Right. Here's the plane up here. Flying along, and it's making a, a descent. Um, it's going to land at the Reagan Airport near Washington, D.C. It's 3,900 feet above the ground. All right, so here's the ground right here. Okay, so it's 3,900 feet above the ground, and it's going to, I'm going to assume it's a straight line coming down there. This is a right angle. All right, so it's going to begin its descent with an angle of depression of 6 degrees. So angles of depression are measured from this line of sight, this horizontal, measured downward. So this is my 6 degrees right there. All right, so a couple ways to go from here. First of all, you could realize that this angle and this angle are complementary. So 90 minus 6 would give you 84 degrees, so you know that this angle is 84 degrees. Or you could realize that this line here and this line here are parallel to each other, and then this is your transversal. Good to be able to recognize that. Therefore, if this is 6 degrees here, this is also 6 degrees. You may do it either way you like. Um, it doesn't really make any difference. Okay. So let's pick up from where we left off. We now know that we've, in fact, we've got all three angles in here. Um, so I'm just going to pick the 84 and I'm going to say the cosine of 84 degrees and that is equal to the adjacent side which is 3900 divided by the hypotenuse, which is C, and I think C is the thing we're trying to find. The distance traveled, the plane will fly when landing. So that's C, and then we want to end up finding the ground distance traveled. Oh, well, so that's going to be B. Okay, we want to find two things here. So we're going to multiply both sides by C, and then simultaneously can we divide by the cosine of 84 degrees. So we end up with C equals 3,900 divided by the cosine of 84 degrees. And I'm just going to write this final value up here. So C is 37,310 feet. And then we want to calculate B. So um, I could use lots of different things at this point. I'm going to use tangent. We haven't used tangent. So the tangent of 84 degrees, well that's opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be B over uh, 3900. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3900. So B is going to be 3900 times the tangent of 84 degrees. So B is going to be 37. 1,106 feet. All right, so there's two examples uh, using angle of elevation and angle of depression.